thing in your nightmare, that thing that's holding you back, that thing that's dragging you down, that thing is you. You will not outwork me. And the whole gig is just a giant hustle. That's all it is. Life is just a hustle. That's all life is. One giant hustle. Welcome back. It is Monday afternoon. Is it? Yeah. Dude, I woke up this morning like not even know what day of the week it is. So you can see blankets on the ground. So we're going to do something tonight that was not on my to-do list, but it's been in the back of my head since we very first time we blew up this car. Um, the very first time we took this car to the dyno, I was blown away that it actually worked. Uh, motor blew up, but I was blown away that it actually went through gears, and that's what I mean by when I say it worked. Uh, this is the very first transmission I have ever built. Uh, when I built this transmission, I was not doing YouTube. Uh, I followed other YouTubers' videos. It's a Turbo 400 uh, manual, uh, reverse valve body, I think it is, trans brake, all that good stuff. Uh, some billet components in there, uh, oversized drums, um, all kinds of different stuff. I think I spent like $2,800 on parts whenever I built my Turbo 400 and uh, I went all in, first one I ever built. Um, and I figured that since I can't do my motor, that you should probably know how to do your transmission. Um, that way you're not having somebody build your motor and your transmission, because that could get really expensive fast. And we already know the Coyote is very expensive and rough on me. So, so uh, with that said, uh, no issues at all with transmission. Everything's fine. Uh, we've had a couple comments pop up that uh, people think that something's going on with the transmission because it seems like the car doesn't want to quite, uh, when you give it gas, it doesn't want to quite roll or take off. It doesn't roll that easy as I think it should either. Uh, the brakes are not dragging, um, but it just seems like this car is harder to push. Now I get it's 3,000 pounds, but I push around Randy's, John's. We all know John's weighs in, I think some of the no prep classes, 3,500 pounds uh, when it's fully weight weighed down with all the weight I think um, I know we're over 3,000 and John's a lot of times on no prep um, so it's like you push around theirs and then you push this and you're like something seems off so we also have a little bit of build up on the bottom of the pan it's been like that since like day one um, so we're gonna we're gonna check it out that's what we're gonna do this afternoon um, so unfortunately I don't have no big drain pan I've got tons of drain pans at the shop so I have took uh, a five gallon purple power buckets white cleaned it out real good it took two milk jugs gallon milk jugs cut the tops off so I'm gonna attempt to undo the bolt fill up a milk jug hit the bolt back in I know it's gonna get messy and uh, then dump it in the bucket and take the fluid out one milk jug at a time so a gallon at a time don't know how much is in there that's another issue uh the very first time that we had this car running uh for the ogs of the channel y'all remember that was a disaster at the shop uh it wouldn't stay running and then we got to the house and it wouldn't stay running and we've just uh the transmission has never been looked into at all um it's just worked it's always just worked so we want to kind of drop the fluid out see how much we have number one it'd be nice to kind of measure it going back in it'd be nice to kind of measure it coming out and then kind of measure it going back in um, and we also want to we have a universal dipstick so one thing that's important with universal dipstick is to have your pan off the transmission i did not have this one whenever i built transmission put your dipstick in take a straight edge across and mark where the dipstick the height of the top of the pan. So like you have to draw a line across. I'll show you when we get there. In case you're new and you don't understand what I'm talking about. Um, I've heard that a million times. That way you you pretty much, from what I hear, you want the whole pan of the transmission full and that that's pretty much supposed to be full. So we want to, we want to know where that line is basically. Uh, whether somebody corrects me or whatever, I want to know where the top of the pan is on my dipstick. So we're just gonna scribe it, we're gonna take it, scribe it, put a really good groove in it so we always know exactly where um, the depth is on the dipstick when we pull it out. Um, so that's what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna check the fluid, see if we got any metal in there. And I decided that the car's still up on the stands, jack stands. This is pretty much the last thing. I'm gonna wipe a bunch of stuff down while I'm under there too. I'm gonna check the overflow puke tank. I'll show you that in case uh, you're new and you don't remember when we put all that in or you weren't here when we put all that in. And um, we're just gonna check it out. I guess you can count this as preventative maintenance. I told you in the last video about the money situation with this car right now. So we're kind of now trying to do some things 
that um, don't cost us anything. It's just time. So this will get it off of our back of our mind. Uh, leave in the comments how often y'all check your transmissions, how often A, you um, drop your fluid, or change your fluid, and how often you literally just open it up, drop the fluid and check it, I guess you could say. And if you're new to the channel and you just found us, go look at the comments. These guys that are on these channels is absolutely amazing. I think I'm one of the luckiest YouTubers on YouTube because my whole entire channel is so full of positive comments and you know just good advice and everything. The comment sections are a lot of times really rich with information and uh, helpful people. So y'all are the best, I appreciate it. Let's get under this car and let's get dirty. All right, when we first come underneath here, you can already see we have got some buildup on this bolt. So there's always some buildup on this bolt and it will get a little bit on the ground. The bottom of the pan has always had uh, crap all over it. And I'm really thinking it's all coming from that bolt, but I'm not 100% sure. The sides of the pan right here is just dust. So there's no fluid on the sides of the pan. It's just all over the bottom. Um, air is flowing this way though, when you're going down. Uh, when you're driving so i don't understand why it'd be all over this unless it's literally just running from here and running up these fins and then just running all over the place i really don't understand what's going on here at all with this pan ever since i got it but what we're, we're that's one thing we're going to look at is uh we're going to make sure our mating surfaces this time when we put it back together is all good and we're going to make sure we have a good seal on this bolt right here and just we're just going to check everything out now that we've had this thing up and running for a little while, we're going to try to wipe all this nastiness down. So let's get this started, get this fluid dropped out in these um, milk jugs, and uh, let's start taking this thing apart. What these exhaust dumps, when they were dumping here, has done to the bottom side of this car is extremely um, depressing. Just the amount of pollen and dirt and crap. I mean, there's a drive shaft tunnel and everything that's underneath here is uh beyond depressing this is the reason why we changed the dumps because we didn't want it to be getting into you know these sliders and these heim joints and all of this stuff that's underneath this car and so that's the reason why we made the change that we made so that the exhaust now exits outside of the car and we don't have to worry about blowing fluid up underneath here so here's my uh puke tank for the transmission it goes underneath here. Uh, originally, I wanted to put it in the car, but I couldn't find a good way to do it. So we're going to go ahead and crack this valve open. Last time I checked this, uh, there was nothing in here. And there shouldn't really be anything in here, I don't think. Looks like we're good. So uh, there's the answer to if anybody had the question of, is the transmission pushing fluid out? It is not. We haven't really raced this thing a ton. Y'all have seen every single pass. Uh, so I didn't think there'd really be anything in this. So, all right, let's drop the fluid out of this transmission. All right, so, so far it is coming out extremely clean. Um, it looks like we may have some buildup on this. So we'll take a look. That was a brand new build on transmission though. But I mean, that stuff is absolutely uh, clean. Like it doesn't, it doesn't look bad at all. So we definitely are gonna probably filter this stuff with a uh, water-based paint uh, filter and probably reuse this um, because I don't see no reason to throw it away being that it looks this good and we don't have hardly any passes on it. Well, she doesn't look bad at all, guys. Everything looks good. The spec, the trans brake wires all look good where they're supposed to be. Uh, the filter is supposed to have just a little bit of play in it like that. I do remember that all the pickup tubes are still there. I mean, everything looks freaking good there's our dipstick so we need to mark that um let's get this pan out of here and take a look at it well i really feel like it is safe to say that y'all might have yourself a transmission builder here <laughs> i'm just joking i don't consider myself good at anything but man that fluid just has um i mean there's nothing in it like there's no uh big items we got some buildup on the magnet. Um, we'll take a look at that here in a second. Let's pour this out. All right. So there's some metal in here, the little glimmers, as you can see. But again, nothing big. It's a little gritty. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. So I don't know if that's normal. Um... 
Y'all can leave your in the comments your opinions um, or your information because some of y'all are extremely smart. Keep in mind, this was a brand new transmission build. This was a used transmission. I completely took it apart and I built it in my garage. Um, the transmission sat for one year. I wasn't super careful. I, I did not have a cover over the dipstick hole that whole entire year. Um, but I mean, I didn't purposely get crap in there. It was in the car when the whole front end got cut off twice with no, I think it was in the car with no cover over the dipstick hole. So some stuff could have got in through there a little bit, but I think that from what I always hear that when you have a brand new build, you're going to have a little bit of buildup. So here is the magnet. Okay. Let's see here. That's what we've got, right? Right there. So that's it. So I don't know. I know it's hard to see. I don't know if that's normal or not. Y'all can leave in the comments. Um, but from what I have seen on used uh, transmission, daily drivers, you know, um, I don't see anything alarming. Um, I haven't been into a ton of transmissions, but I've definitely been into my fair share of them. Uh, you know, back whenever we always think that we can fix something by just doing something that you read off Google, it never works like that. Normally the flip cars are always, if it's a bad, if it comes in a bad transmission, normally it always leaves a bad transmission or not leaves, it is done. But uh, every now and then you get lucky with some electronic thing in the valve in the valve body. But yeah, so we're going to clean this out. We're going to go ahead and brake parts, clean this out, put all this back together. And now I don't know if I want to reuse this fluid. We might just wait on this. I've got more fluid at the shop. I think we'll actually leave this out. Um, just make sure we don't have no grit in there. And I think we'll put fresh fluid in it. I kind of want to get rid of this fluid. So when I anyway. bring the uh, fluid home, I'll show you what it is. It's basically like, I think it's blue high guard or something, or it's whatever John and Randy run. So whatever them two run. Um, I did join a live chat with um, uh, an owner of an extreme transmission builders. It was on the Ohio Grudge Facebook page, one of the live chats I was in there. And he recommended running the um, B&M trick shift fluid and not running this stuff. He said that this hydraulic fluid stuff is thick and so it doesn't go through your transmission like it's necessarily supposed to. And it can lead to transmission failures. Um, I don't have the money right now to be purchasing fluids that we don't even need. We need motor oil before we need transmission fluid. And I've already purchased five gallons of this. I already have it. I've been carrying it around. So I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just leave this stuff out probably. And we will put the other stuff in, the new stuff that's left over out in that five gallon bucket. And basically try to use that up. I'm pretty sure I left that in the trailer. I don't think I brought it home. I'm pretty sure it's in the trailer. We can grab it tomorrow at the shop. Um, but go ahead and put fresh stuff in just to kind of go ahead and use it up. I do think I want to switch and get off the hydraulic fluid. Um, just I had quite a few people advise against it. Not 100% sure. I know it's an extremely controversial topic uh, that people are going to tell you different. Go ahead and drop that one in the comments too on what you recommend for trans fluid because um, I will weigh out all your options. And in the future, we will uh, I will consider what everybody has said and take it into account on if I'm going to continue using this stuff or if I'm going to switch. And like I said here, when I grab the fluid, it should be in this video, I'll show you what we currently have. Let's get this back. All right, and for this leaking bolt, uh, it's just got this copper washer on it. I think it came with it, maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. I think it came with it though. Pretty sure it did. We need to switch to the washers that have the little rubber O-ring inside of them. Um, you can find them in the old drain owl. Uh, at events or rallies, but it's nine o'clock at night and um, we don't have one. Maybe we'll grab one tomorrow though and swap it back out before we put the fluid, um, the fluid in. Maybe that's a good idea. Maybe I should take this with me tomorrow. No, we'll grab a variety pack if we're gonna do it. All right, let's get it in. All right, for your dipstick, make sure you're Dipstick is fully seated. We're gonna come right here with a Sharpie. 
and we're just going to mark mine all the way around so we hope that when we pull this thing out i guess we should actually go ahead and pull it out uh it's still all right so it. we have our sharpie line on here now see it right there it's a black line so that's where the basically the top of the pan is probably right here where my fingernails at because that did stick down a little lower so we're gonna leave this alone we'll come in here and we're gonna scribe a good line all the way around so we know where our top of our pan's at and then that way we know if we're overfilled from the top of the pan or if we're underfilled from the top of the pan basically because this is just a universal uh dipstick so it's not like it comes with uh exact measurements on it all right so this is the stuff that we have been using um like i said this is exactly what john uses this is where i got this from uh he told me to pick this up and so we went ahead and bought a whole five gallons of it um on the dipstick where our line is uh i'm gonna just make a mark across that if y'all have any recommendations on how to make this thing where you can see it better um basically you can see right there it's normally really hard to see fluid on it so i'm not really sure like i guess i can scratch uh lines in it scribe marks in it to like you know hatch marks like x's to make it where you can see the fluid on there better y'all have any recommendations let me know because it's hard to see it really is hard to see that clear blue fluid on there believe it or not um so yeah that's gonna be it uh leave in the comments anything that y'all uh recommendations on this and everything we're gonna put this back in the car uh get this fluid in the transmission and then let's see here i think friday when i get off work we can get this thing off of the jack stands and get this bad boy uh, outside and let it get operating temperature run because it hasn't ran really since we went to the track two weeks ago and just make sure I get the uh, fluid go ahead and get the fluid level right um, on the car it's supposed to be messy here like all weekend Easter weekend so um, we won't probably we won't do too much but we're definitely gonna let this thing run and uh, breathe for a little bit on Friday like comment subscribe share and I'll catch you on the next video thanks y'all